still in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. St. John 20, verse 8. The human experience is a quest for infinity. We all, in our own ways, share a drive to taste and feel and see and be more than the sum of our parts. This compelling force stands behind every innovation and accomplishment of our race, pushing us farther and faster into new realms of technology, providing us the ever-increasing potential to alleviate pain and hunger and maybe even death. Why then should we care about Jesus rising from the dead? This question is asked in every generation. But our own age asks it in a very impressive sounding way. If in a few decades or so, I or my children could be functionally immortal, why should I care about Christ? Well, for one, it is the saddest tragedy of our age that men and women have become convinced that an eternity spent in this unjust evil world is the greatest hope they can possibly imagine. An eternity spent watching TV or sitting around on social media or whatever grim fate awaits all those who wish to keep on living until the day the sun dies. This comes to us because our world preaches a false gospel with a false freedom as its core. We are told to rot in our bad choices because they are our choices. We are told that this conformity is the ultimate expression of our humanity. But it's not. It's a prison. And it is what is in that prison with us that provides our second reason to run to that tomb with Peter and John to find the truth. What lives in that prison of our false freedom is the darkness. Now, this darkness is always with us, and it cannot be banished by the glow of a screen or the warmth of our favorite drug or the exploitation of another person for our satisfaction. We could build a rocket and fly to Jupiter and the darkness would be right there with us, waiting, scheming, blotting out whatever good we were trying to accomplish. Just ask the innovators at Uber if they thought the first thing their self-driving car would do is kill someone. Ask Apple if they thought the drive to put smartphones in the hands of every American would lead to child slavery in the mines of Congo. Or ask the researchers at DARPA if they could have possibly imagined that the internet they were inventing would become a recruitment tool for terrorists and the vehicle for pornography's war on love. The darkness does not care if our intentions are pure, although they, they usually aren't pure. The darkness simply hates us and that it teaches us to substitute the fire of love for the warmth of its loathing. God the Son came into the world to destroy that darkness. Over and over and over again, Jesus tells this unpopular truth to the disciples who will abandon him and the crowds who will murder him. People love to quote John 3.16. It is, after all, an amazing revelation of God's love and mercy for a world that doesn't deserve it. But less quoted is John 3, 19, which says, And this is the judgment, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. People often say, I hear this all the time, You can't judge me. 
by which they're simply parroting back the great lie we began our sermon with. My personal freedom to do what I want is the ultimate expression of my humanity. Interestingly, people rarely use this line of argument against a judge in a courtroom because we are rightfully afraid of what that judge will do to us. In a court of law, you can't judge me is a completely ridiculous statement because we are afraid. Jesus, on the other hand, dies for us and encourages us to serve him and his mission to rid the world of evil, not out of fear, but because we love him and presumably because we hate evil. However, we are taught through years of careful conditioning to just say no, to choose rather to live as slaves to our desires and slaves to those who have power over us. If we are not constantly staring into the light, our morality will be shaped by the laws of the powerful rather than the love shown forth by God on the cross. We will simply live at the beck and call of those who can give us the fix of whatever we think we need to get us through the next day. In that environment, in that darkness, we will never be free because we haven't even begun to understand what true freedom looks like. In that darkness, we can't even begin to understand what it means that Christ has thrown off the shackles of death and risen from the tomb in the greatest act of liberation our fallen world will ever know. Christ did not die and rise in order to provide our lives with a manageable amount of reasonable religiousness. He died and rose to bring us the light, to free us from the slavery of darkness. As our Lord says, I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has given me a commandment what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. St. John 12, 46 through 50. If we take nothing at all away from today's sermon but this, let it be this. Eternal life and obedience are absolutely connected because obedience and love are inseparable. The thing we serve is the thing we love. The radical obedience of God the Son to his Father was the ultimate sign of his love for him. And that love between Father and Son led to the opening of hell and the resurrection of the first glorified man. Hell could not hold that love, just as the darkness cannot overcome the light. Why does this matter? It matters because we cannot expect to rid ourselves of the darkness if we do not devote ourselves to the light. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the event we celebrate today and every Sunday, is the beginning of the new creation, the beginning of the end of the darkness that robs us of our glory and makes us content with the transitory nonsense of a dying world. Jesus Christ did not die and rise to make us feel better about living in the darkness. He died to break us. He died to break us free, free from lives that have no meaning, free to give our lives meaning in a world that would make us nothing but circus animals living for our next treat. We can be so much more than that. 
The world needs us to be more than that. We can actually reach for infinity as we humbly live out our days because the true Christian's future is secure in Christ, secure in the resurrected Lord who has broken down the barrier between God and man, creator and creature, time and space. Our tomorrow and the next day and the next need not be dictated to us by the whims of men or devils. We can and must devote ourselves to live as those whose resurrection into glory is only separated by death and time. The first, conquered by our victorious risen king, and the second, his created tool for building that kingdom the world was made to welcome. To build our lives around anything else, to slave at our jobs for the next toy, to grow our families so that we won't be lonely, to wallow in pity or self-loathing, to live for anything other than that transcendent future Christ has made sure and real with his resurrection, to live for anything other than that infinite reality is to fail to be truly human. Today we are here, and it is right that we should be. But where will we be tomorrow or the next week or the next? What master will we lovingly serve with our time? Because that is the master we are counting on to be there when we meet death. I pray your master is he who burst forth from the darkness of death. I pray your master is he whose light shines forth right now in the good works of his recreated people. I pray your master is he who died and rose so that a new race of men might walk the earth and conquer infinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.